Welcome to another video in our series of the fundamentals of paramedic practice. In this video, we'll discuss safety in paramedic practice, including principles of infection control and manual handling. Let's start with the principles of infection control. It should come as no surprise that the control of infection is of utmost importance to healthcare workers, services and facilities. The World Health Organization outlines that standard precautions are imperative in healthcare in order to reduce the transmission of pathogens between healthcare workers, our patients and the community. Standard precautions are the practices, procedures and policies we adhere to to minimise the risk of cross-infection and include appropriate hand hygiene practices, personal protective equipment or PPE, risk assessments and appropriate waste disposal. The transmission of pathogens occurs via what we call transmitters. Examples of transmitters of infection include the hands of healthcare workers and others, surfaces, transport equipment such as stretchers or wheelchairs, diagnostic equipment such as stethoscopes and blood pressure cuffs, and bed linens. Therefore, to minimise cross-infection, we must employ correct hand hygiene technique, clean equipment and surfaces regularly and effectively, and dispose of all waste and contaminated items appropriately. Let's look at hand washing techniques. The World Health Organisation sets guidelines around hand washing that are employed across the world. This diagram illustrates the universally accepted instructions on how to correctly wash your hands. They also have guidelines on the use of alcohol-based hand rub, which can be employed when hands are not visibly soiled. The other key principle of hand hygiene for healthcare workers is understanding when to clean your hands when dealing with a patient. These moments of hand hygiene include before touching a patient, before a procedure, in between patient encounters, after being exposed to bodily fluids or blood, and any other time when you feel it is necessary to clean your hands. Let's talk about PPE. Personal protective equipment is used in many professions to protect employees. In healthcare, it is used to protect healthcare workers from the transmission of infection and from transmitting pathogens to their patients. PPE used in healthcare for this purpose includes gloves, eyewear, face shields, aprons, surgical gowns and masks. Now let's talk about waste disposal. There are three key streams of waste disposal and each will have separate procedures in relation to disposal. General waste includes paper rubbish, such as packaging. Clinical waste includes anything that contains fluids or contaminants from patients, such as blood-stained items and excrement. And thirdly, sharps, which includes any object that is sharp and poses a risk of needle stick injury. Clinical waste and sharps are incinerated at very high temperatures to remove any pathogens. The final topic of safety in paramedic practice that we'll discuss here is manual handling. Did you know that when ambulance services first started, their employees were viewed as ambulance bearers, whereby they essentially collected unwell people from the community and carried them to hospital. Over time, the core services have evolved from simply transporting patients to clinically treating them. Even so, manoeuvring patients still remains a core part of our role, and it is therefore essential that we minimise the risk of injury and employ safe manual handling principles. Key principles of manual handling include assess manual handling risks before commencing a manual handling task. Minimise manual handling tasks by utilising equipment whenever possible for lifting and transporting, such as stretchers and stair chairs. Plan the route, minimising turns and steps so that it's clear of obstructions. Perform the manual handling task with correct manual handling technique at all times, avoiding unsafe manoeuvres like twisting, stooping, bending, pulling and sudden movements. Share the manual handling task with team members wherever possible, 
However, be aware that unpredictable movement from others could pose a risk and you must therefore communicate very effectively. Allow adequate rest times between manual tasks. Now, to assess the risk of a manual handling task, conduct a tile assessment. T stands for task. Does the task involve unsafe manoeuvres we just mentioned? I stands for individual. Are there individual factors that impact on this task? For example, do you need to be a certain height or strength? Does the individual have a medical condition or injuries that impact on their ability to complete the task? L stands for load. What is the nature of the load? Is it awkward to hold? Are there steps? And E stands for environment. Is there a clear path to carry the load? Is the floor surface easy to walk on? Is it clear of obstructions? Finally, once you've conducted your risk assessment and confirmed that a manual handling task is both safe and necessary, use correct manual handling technique at all times. Use a handling aid where possible. Hold the load as close to your body as possible. When lifting, ensure that you bend at the knees and keep your back straight and your elbows tucked in close to your body. And avoid twisting and any sudden movements. That's all for this video on safety in paramedic practice. Thanks for watching.